Good afternoon. This is the news. The House Assassinations Committee prepares to recreate the killing of President Kennedy. Fort Worth Mayor Hugh Palmer says he's against a proposed garbage fee increase. And a Carter cousin says the president couldn't get reelected today. Texas News with Russ Bloxham, Ed Eubanks, John Gross, and Harold Tan. Good afternoon. The House Committee on Assassinations will restage the 1963 killing of President John Kennedy on Dealey Plaza in Dallas Sunday morning. But the public is not likely to see much. A report from Doug Adams. From the moment the presidential motorcade began its winding journey through downtown Dallas in 1963 and shots rang out just before President Kennedy's car reached the triple overpass, Dealey Plaza has been the object of repeated scrutiny. The reenactment of part of the assassination scene planned for this weekend is not the first time such a recreation has been made. Last year, the motorcade was recreated for a made-for-television motion picture, and observers who had been here in 1963 said the make-believe was frighteningly convincing. This Sunday, when investigators from the House Assassination Subcommittee restaged the gunfire of November 22, 1963, the scene in Dealey Plaza will be noticeably different. The public will be banned from the area, and the news cameras restricted to certain areas. Every effort will be made to keep extraneous noise to a minimum so the investigators can clearly record the sounds of the gunfire as sharpshooters fire from the same sixth floor window where the Warren Commission said Lee Harvey Oswald took aim and fired. The sounds recorded Sunday will be compared with a police tape recording made on the day of the assassination which some people say indicates four shots instead of three were fired. In the midst of all the highly publicized preparations for this event, an important question has almost been overlooked. Will these tests reveal anything conclusive or even significant? Investigators and members of the committee admit the chances are remote. Doug Adams, The Texas News. The mayor of Fort Worth held a news conference this morning and he had some critical comments about the way the city's proposed budget was prepared. Joe Stroop has a report. Uh, Hugh Palmer told reporters about three areas where he suggested major changes in the budget proposal that the city staff has prepared. Palmer said he wants to eliminate current city policy, which immediately reassesses homes after improvements and remodeling, wants the senior citizen homestead exemption raised to $10,000, and wants to eliminate the proposed garbage collection increase. That portion of a tax cut financed by taking the money from the people's other pocket by fee is not a tax cut, but in my judgment is a sleight of hand. Trading taxes for a garbage fee will hurt the average Fort Worth homeowner and taxpayer. And I'll show you in just a moment a chart which I think will help understand that a little more clearly. Palmer's chart indicated that less than 15 percent of the city's homeowners would save money from the garbage fee hike when compared to a tax increase of similar proportions. Palmer's objection to the garbage fee hike was that it benefited those who need it least. His objection to the proposed tax cut is that it would be financed half by the garbage fee hike, half by deliberate deficit spending. Palmer said he would rather find some fat to trim from the budget than, in his words, give the citizens the appearance of a tax break First using all, mirrors. Joe Stroop, The Texas News. The head of the Texas prison system is blaming growth in inmate population in Texas on fewer paroles granted in 1978 than in the year before. Director Bill Estelle made the remarks to reporters today in Austin. Estelle was in Austin testifying before the Legislative Budget Board on construction plans of the Texas Department of Corrections. The department is seeking $130 million over the 1980-81 fiscal year for construction. And of that amount, over $83 million will be spent on a totally new prison on a site yet to be chosen. President Carter's first cousin, Hugh Carter, has stirred up a family hornet's nest with his history of the Carter family. Miss Lillian and Billy are so upset about the book, they aren't even speaking to cousin Hugh. But the visitor from Plains, Georgia, was more than eager to speak with Channel 5's Bobby Wygant for this report. Whenever anyone reveals skeletons from the family closet, there's bound to be trouble. That's what's happening to Hugh Carter, President Carter's first cousin. He's written a book, Cousin Beatty and Cousin Hot. 
The title is based on childhood nicknames. He's Beatty, and the president is Cousin Hot. Hugh Carter says Jimmy Carter and Rosalind liked the book, but Ms. Lillian and Billy Carter are upset about it. Ms. Lillian resents the part about her objecting to Jimmy's marriage to Rosalind because Rosalind wasn't good enough for her son. Ms. Lillian also didn't like Carter writing about her wanting to move into the governor's mansion because she didn't think Rosalind was capable of being First Lady of Georgia. According to Hugh Carter, Billy is Ms. Lillian's favorite son, and Billy is upset about the book because his mother is upset. First cousin Hugh Carter makes his home in Plains, Georgia, where he claims to be the Worm King of America. He also is a Georgia State Senator and has worked closely on all of Jimmy Carter's campaigns. He is quite frank time. when discussing you President Carter's chances for re-election. Well, at this point, uh, I would say that he can because it's still a good ways, a good, good while before the end of the election, before the next election. Now, if, if uh, the election were tomorrow, I would have some doubts about whether he, he would be. But, uh, you, you know, I think he'll run again. I believe he will if the Democrats will, uh, will back him, and uh, I believe that they eventually will. I think the only man that probably would have really oppose him might be Teddy Kennedy, and I don't believe uh, 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 Senator Kennedy uh, will oppose him because he's told him that he wasn't going to run, and uh, I think this is the important fact, and if he gets can get the Democrats behind him, I know he'll run again, and it's my opinion that, uh, that uh, he will be up in the polls by that time and that he will defeat the Republicans. As for Republican nominees in 1980, Hugh Carter thinks it will be either Gerald Ford or Ronald Reagan. Bobby Wygant, the Texas News. Texaco Oil Company today reported that a second test has confirmed the presence of what it calls significant gas reserves about 100 miles off the New Jersey coast. The exploratory well has produced the first natural gas strike off the East Coast, but officials continue stressing that further testing is necessary before an offshore production platform is justified. A former Houston police officer has admitted he plotted to violate the civil rights of a Louisiana teenager who was shot to death by police officers last year. 29-year-old ex-patrolman James A. Estes also agreed to, ju to testify against fellow officers who are charged in the death of 17-year-old Randall Allen Webster of Shreveport. Sentencing for Estes has been delayed until after he testifies against other officers. But by law, Estes can only serve up to one year in prison and be charged a $1,000 fine. Webster was shot to death in February of last year after he'd been stopped in Houston following a high-speed chase with police. So it's hello, clearance, goodbyes. Your Texas Ford dealer has goodbyes. Goodbye clearance now at your Texas Ford dealer. Mr. Peabody, I wanted fresh roasted peanuts and you gave me peanut butter? Oh, same difference. Peter Pan tastes and smells like fresh roasted peanuts. Really? Every peanut they use is fresh and warm from the roaster. Here, taste these peanuts. Mmm. Now, Peter Pan. Mmm. I like fresh roasted peanuts. Better. You can't make a sandwich with peanuts. They roll off the bread. <laughs> I'll take Peter Pan. <laughs> Peter Pan's like fresh roasted peanuts you spread on bread. Wallpapers to Go opens this weekend in Dallas and Fort Worth. See 1,200 patterns on display. See 30,000 rolls in stock. Free wallpaper hanging classes. Free door prices. Free sweepstakes drawing. Free houseplants with every purchase of $10 or more. Save on super values like selected pre-pasted vinyl papers. Now just $1.88 per single roll during the grand opening of Wallpapers to Go. 9850 Central Expressway in Dallas and 6996 Green Oaks Road in Fort Worth. Cena announces System 3. System 3. A new picture tube for the sharpest Zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. A new chassis designed to be the most reliable in Zenith history. Most reliable. System 3. The best Zenith ever. See Zenith at Enmans Television. There's an Enmans near you with the largest service department in the Metroplex. Enmans Television. Serving Dallas since 1936. Those three balloonists who crossed the Atlantic will return to America by Concord, courtesy of the French government. The trio, all from New Mexico, landed to a tumultuous welcome yesterday, 60 miles shy of Paris.
The Americans could have landed in Ireland or England. That would have been enough to set the record. But they kept going, trying to reach Le Bourget Airport in Paris, where Charles Lindbergh landed 51 years ago. They almost made it, but the wind pushed them just to the west of Paris. And they had to land in a wheat field beside a highway. French motorists jumped out of their cars to welcome the Americans, who had brought along their own champagne to celebrate. This morning, Parisian newspapers used all the French superlatives in describing the flight, calling it fantastique, formidable, impossible. The balloonists were at the American embassy, where they were the overnight guests of the ambassador. After a night's rest, they were ready to answer more questions from reporters. Unless uh, frontiers are challenged, and the uh, difficult or the impossible, and uh, find the Atlantic in a balloon is just about impossible. It, it borders on it. Uh, if these uh, challenges are not met uh, from, from time to time, then it appears to me that we, we do not move forward as a society, regardless whether it's flying a balloon across the Atlantic or flying an uh, a, uh, airplane to a world altitude record or breaking the speed record or writing a fine piece of literature or what have you. What the balloonists have done may not be as dramatic as Charles Lindbergh's flight half a century ago, but it should not be underrated either. After all, seven people have died trying to cross the Atlantic in balloons. It was a remarkable achievement. It was, as the French are saying, fantastique. John Cochran, NBC News, Paris. In national news headlines today, the government had both bad and good news to report today. The good news is that the economy grew more from April to June of this year than it has during the same period of time in almost two years. The bad news is that inflation and the condition of the U.S. dollar abroad has forced the Federal Reserve Board to increase the rate of interest it charges member banks. There is no immediate word, by the way, as to what effect this will have on consumer loans, if any. The strongest earthquake ever recorded in North America rocked office buildings in downtown Anchorage, Alaska this morning. There were no immediate reports of damage or injuries. The quake registered 5.9 on the Richter scale. And finally, in Memphis, Tennessee, police and firefighters have voted to accept new contracts, thereby ending the bitter strikes that forced the National Guards to come in to protect the city. Russ? Jamie West is director of the Dallas Consumer Affairs Office, and one of her favorite places is the farmer's market. That's where we find her today for a report for peach lovers. It's a peach of a time at the Dallas Farmer's Market. After a blistering summer, cruel heat, ravenous grasshoppers, finally we had some rain, and now the Texas peach crop is rosy, red, and full of specimens the size of baseballs, well, maybe a few tennis balls, too. This plethora of peaches, however, is going to be available for about only the next seven days. Our Parker and Palo Pinto County growers report that the trees are full of fruit, all ripening at the same time in the warm weather. All varieties found on the market are suitable for freezing, canning, relish making, pickling, eating, and of course ice cream freezing. Favorite peaches are the Loring, Alberta, and J.M. Hale. The best indicator of ripeness is a yellow or creamy ground color. Red color or blush may be present in different degrees depending on the variety, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the peach is ripe, for peaches come with white meat and yellow meat. Peaches to be frozen or canned should be firm and free from soft spots and insect damages. However, some growers may have overripes for sale. Peaches, which in fact do have soft spots and bruised places, these peaches are generally a bargain and are excellent for immediate eating and for making that summer cobbler. Peach size determines price, but consider this. The highest priced large peach has less peeling and the peach stone or pit, regardless of the variety, is the same size so that you get more meat for all that work. Whatever size peach is purchased during this year, it's certainly going to be less expensive than what the Romans in the first century bought the delicious fruit for in their farmer's market, $4.50 each. This is Jamie West for the Dallas Consumer Affairs Department and the Texas News. How many years will a new roof last? 
Well, this one will last a lot of years. Because John's Manville made it, and because they made it with fiberglass. Fiberglass shingles are beautiful. They're fire resistant, and they last and last. How much extra does a fiberglass roof cost? Not much. But how many extra years of roof life can you expect? Call this number to find out, and to find who sells John's Manville fiberglass shingles in your area. I've just been shopping, and look what I got free from Estee Lauder. Her famous Swiss performing extract, plus four of her super beauty products. $19 worth is yours free with any Estee Lauder purchase of $6.50 or more. Isn't it fabulous? Not just any gift, but an Estee Lauder gift free. Your free gift is available through September 2nd at Neiman Marcus, downtown North Park in Fort Worth. A two-car wreck on Interstate 20 near Tyler last night killed three men from Fort Worth and injured the Dallas driver of the second vehicle. Eddie Perez, Billy Castorino, and Tony Lopez were identified as the dead. Investigators said the victim's car went out of control, crossed the median, and collided with the oncoming auto. It's that time of the year again when marijuana is harvested. And while much of the Mexican and South American pot enters the United States through the Gulf of Mexico, at least $25 million worth won't this year. The Coast Guard has seized 40 tons of marijuana apparently headed for Texas. The vessel, called Superfly 2, was first boarded two days ago, but only today did permission to seize the boat come through. All 16 members of the crew claimed to be Colombians. They were arrested without a fight. Time for sports now, and John Gross, the Rangers went down fighting <laughs> last night, but they went down nonetheless. Does this put them out of contention? No, not at all. They're Good. in third place now in the American League West, and the next couple of days could be a true picture as far as the Rangers. The Rangers fell to the White Sox last night with Don Kessinger laying down a bunt, only to find Kurt Bavacqua make the fielding play, but throwing off balance, and the ball rolled to the wall. Chicago added two more runs in the third inning and added a solo run in the fourth to go ahead four to nothing. Toby Hara hit a two-run homer for Texas, and the Rangers lost the game 4-2. to two. Channel 5 will carry the next three Ranger games, all against Kansas City, all crucial games. Game time tonight, on live on 5, will be at 7.30. Meanwhile, in afternoon action, Chicago uh, lost to Cincinnati 8-3 to three in the National League. The Angels could have moved into a tie with Kansas City last night, but it didn't happen. Boyd Matson has details. The California Angels had a chance to move into a first-place tie with Kansas City in the American League West last night. But when it was over, they had only helped Boston pad their Eastern Division lead. The Angels started out correctly. They got a run in the first from Joe Rudy's single. But the Red Sox got it right back in the second when Gary Hancock singled to drive in Carlton Fisk from second base. The Sox added another run in that inning and two more in the third. The Angels began to come back in the third when Joe Rudy hit a two-run homer. And by the top of the sixth inning, California was in front, 6-5, to five, and temporarily in first place. Their share of first lasted only half an inning. In a wild sixth inning, California proceeded to give the game away. First, Bobby Gritch bobbled a sure double play ball. Then Don Baylor, with the bases loaded, fielded a ground ball and elected to get the man at first before making a bad throw home. That allowed the tying run to score, and it was six apiece. The bases were loaded again when pitcher Ken Brett balked and the go-ahead run was allowed to walk home for Boston. That finished the Angels, and Boston came out victorious 8-6. to six. Boyd Matson, NBC News, Los Angeles. We'll have a half-hour special on the Dallas Cowboys tonight at 7. Dallas will host the Oilers tomorrow night, and we'll have a delayed broadcast of that game Sunday afternoon. Tom Landry is the only head coach of the Cowboys, and I ask him to pick out his biggest victory. Oh, the greatest victory on the field. It's hard to say the one I enjoyed the most and I thought was had the most meaning for us was uh, our first Super Bowl win. I think that team deserved that win. I think they went through the, uh, the Green Bay years of losing the close ones. They, they lost the Cleveland a couple of years badly and everybody said they were couldn't win the big one. And, and then they came back uh, after the Cardinal loss in 1970 when they we got beat 38 to nothing, and they came back and went in the Super Bowl against Baltimore and lost by a field goal. Then the next year, when we won it, was the most satisfying victory for the benefit of the players. I think one of the most satisfying teams I ever coached was the 75 team because they were a team that, after we looked, lose the Lilies and all of these, uh, they were a club that really didn't have the talent to go to the Super Bowl. 
but they put it together and they went. And that was the most enjoyable year that I coached, I believe, uh, a team. Big horse race coming up tomorrow, matching Aladar and Affirmed. Len Dillon has a report. Aladar, but for being born the same year as Affirmed, would probably be a triple crown winner and the favorite in tomorrow's race. Instead, Aladar will be a close second betting choice to Affirmed, in spite of impressive wins in the Arlington Classic and the Whitney Stakes. It was in the $75,000 Whitney on August 5th that Aladar finished 10 lengths ahead of Buckaroo for his second straight win since losing to Affirmed in the Triple Crown races. Trainer John Veach says Aladar is ready and can win tomorrow. And jockey Jorge Velasquez is positive Aladar will. Affirmed's trainer, Laz Barrera, thinks otherwise and points out that Affirmed has beaten Aladar seven out of nine times and discounts the fact that jockey Lafitte Pinkai Jr. will be up instead of the injured Steve Cawthon. Affirmed in his last start on August 8th staged a roaring come from behind finish in the Jim Dandy at Saratoga to nip sensitive Prince by a half a length at the wire. Saturday's Travers between Affirmed and Aladar could be one of the greatest races ever at Saratoga. Len Dillon reporting. Jack Nicholas has the early second round lead at the Westchester Golf Classic. Jerry Payton and Gibby Gilbert a shot back tonight at 6. A report on last night's Rams game. Get rugged back to school values at Ward's. Power Denims. Ward's best jeans are strong enough for even the roughest riders. Their adorable blend of polyester, cotton, and nylon, so they last. And Ward's Power Denims are as handsome as they are strong. Right now, save 25% on Ward's Power Denims in all sizes for men and boys. Get our strongest jeans for your rough bunch. Power Denims from Ward's. Know what made Casablanca so great? The Casablanca ceiling fan from Emerson Electric. Cools like a gentle breeze. Now you can put a little Casablanca in your home, and it'll cut your air conditioning costs. There's a built-in variable speed control, an accessory light, a swag chain kit. So you must remember this, the Casablanca ceiling fan, only from Emerson. Available at all Montgomery Wards. Well, sir, anything new from the weather department yes. besides H.O.T., really? Yes, yes, not quite as H.O.T. Oh, well, looking good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that front, that norther, is pushing down across Oklahoma and through the panhandle. I think it may kind of ease on down into north Texas. I thought it'd be stationary maybe just south of the Red River, but now a little bit further south, down into our own area. I think we'll see the wind shift around into an east or northeasterly direction probably tomorrow during the afternoon period. It'll kind of ease around. There will be a few cumulus. It'll build up along that front. One or two of them may develop a thunderstorm, but I certainly can't see any general area whatsoever. Take a look at it now, if you will, and we'll show you what's going on at the present time. It's still hot, even along the front. It has passed through Childress now, and the wind has shifted to the northwest, but the temperature is still, on the hour at 5, 103 degrees. 103 at Holbert, 101 at uh, Wichita Falls. Within the red shaded area, that's where the temperatures are 100 degrees or better, except one little exception, and that's at Paris, Texas. It's 105 at Ponca City, 104 at Enid. If there were a lot of moisture coming up from the south, they would really have some thunderstorms along this front tonight. And there may still be a few develop, but the moisture is very scarce, and the air is rather dry, and it's going to be difficult for them to form as it gets a little further to the east. But we're going to keep an eye on the radar, particularly from... Um, Oh, say south of Wichita Falls near Vernon on up into the northern sections of Oklahoma. I don't think we'll be affected here. Now, on the national weather map, this is the location of the front. There's a bit of a low trying to form now right in central Kansas. I think there's a possibility even yet that some showers or thunderstorms may develop in the Kansas City area. But nothing at the moment and nothing showing on the radar at the moment. The nearest thing to them is up in the northern portion of uh, Nebraska and up in the northwestern portions of Iowa. But the reports all say the clouds are beginning to form and they're all right in the vicinity of this front and it is moving toward the east, toward Kansas City. There is widespread shower activity down in the southeast and this is unseasonably cool air coming across from the Pacific Northwest and it'll slowly push on down into the central part of the country. That's going to force our uh, cold front down, I think even uh, further south in Fort Worth and Dallas, maybe down as far south as Hillsboro. 
then I think it'll become stationary and pretty well break up tomorrow. Here's what I think the weather will look like. I think the front will push on down into our area and will become stationary at that point. We'll revise the forecast for Kansas City. The front is pushing further to the south than we expected and is drier. So let's say good weather for the ball game on Saturday and hope that we can get by tonight without any of that thunderstorm activity developing directly overhead. We'll look for some thunderstorms to develop tomorrow afternoon and evening out here in New Mexico in the Panhandle and widely scattered along the wind shift of this front, which is going to be through the Metroplex. So if you're out on the lakes, right now I think the weather will be pretty good. But keep an eye on it. If the clouds begin to gather and look uh, rather ominous, get off the lake, wait 30 minutes to an hour, and everything will be okay. Thunderstorm in the south, heavy thunderstorms along the front as it moves east. And then on Sunday, here's Kansas City. Let's say another good day there. Revising the forecast that previously called for rain, now I think the weather will be good, and the thunderstorms, again, will be scattered across north Texas and into the central part of the country, of course, through the mountains of Mexico, New Mexico, and Arizona. There is the radar, and nothing is showing on it at this hour. The sky outside is absolutely clear. Visibility is good. The Dallas pollen count is listed as high, and it is mostly fungus, lesser amounts of grass weeds, and lesser amounts of ragweed, while on the Tarrant County side, it is listed as light, and 20% of it is ragweed of the 72%, and grass accounts for 28%. So ragweed is definitely showing up now. South-southeast is the wind direction under these clear skies. It is 8 to 10 miles an hour, and the barometer now at 2992. The relative humidity at the moment, 34%. And the temperature, read it and weep, there it is, 103.5. We have to call it 104. No rain. On the forecast, Let's say mostly fair and maybe not quite so hot through the weekend with the winds shifting to light and variable tomorrow. It's been 102 at the airport today, 104 at our position, 95 to 100 tomorrow. One or two showers, don't get caught in them, but get caught in this, if you will, and be back with us in about 60 seconds. Texas News at 5 will continue. This is no way to read or watch TV comfortably. And nobody can be comfortable in an ordinary flat bed. But the extraordinary Niagara adjustable bed with cyclomassage units adjusts to a thousand convenient positions. You read or watch TV comfortably for hours. Meanwhile, clinically tested Niagara cyclomassage units help ease away simple pains, tensions, and fatigue, relieve aching back and sore muscles. Enjoy reading or watching TV in comfort and enjoy the health benefits of the cyclomassage bed. Then sleep deeply and awaken refreshed. Choose from twin size bed, large queen size, or big dual king that adjusts individually for two. The Niagara bed. It's changing the sleeping habits of America. Get the exciting facts by return mail. Call toll free 800-821-7700. 800-821-7700. Call toll free 800-821-7700. This closing story, a motorist in San Diego drove his car to a fire station and complained that a skunk had set up housekeeping behind the radiator of his new car. Ten firemen beat on the hood, yelled at the skunk, squirted a fire hose through the radiator, and raced the car around the station parking lot. They even slammed on the brakes trying to shake the skunk loose. They failed, but they succeeded in making it mad, and when they lifted the hood, the skunk let them have it. The motorist gave up and drove to work, windows down. <laughs> Harold says, not quite so hot this weekend. You have a good one. Same here. Bye-bye. The Dallas Urban League and the Women's Center of Dallas helped me to find the child care I needed. If you need child care, call 748-5938 between 8 and 5 on weekdays. I'm asking you to support the American Cancer Society, not because I've had it, but because you might get it. Clyde Campbell Menswear, Texas leading traditional menswear specialty shops. Clyde Campbell, Fort Worth, Dallas, and Austin. On Monday, the party of the first part in Cleveland sued the party of the second part in San Diego. On Tuesday, the party of the second part turned right around and sued the party of the first part and named the party of the third in San Francisco. On Wednesday, the party of the third part sued a fourth and fifth party in Jacksonville. And on Thursday, the party of the fifth part not only sued a sixth party, but all the other parties one more time. Now we ask you, where would all these parties be without Federal Express Courier Pack? 
Up to two pounds picked up, flown, and delivered overnight for only $14. Booking. 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 Sacrifice. Sacrifice. He once was their soldier. Now he's their prey. Good guys wear black. There's a contract out on me. The FBI, the CIA. Murder, Mr. Booker. Chuck Norris is John T. Booker. And Booker is fighting back. Good guys wear black. See Good Guys Wear Black. Rated PG. Look for this ad. Chip Moody, Texas News, 6 and 10 on TV5. This is NBC Nightly News. With Tom Brokaw substituting for John Chancellor and David Brinkley in Washington. Good evening. With the dollar falling and inflation rising, the Federal Reserve Board ordered higher interest rates in the hope it'll push the dollar up and inflation down, much higher interest rates. The discount rate paid by banks when they borrow money will go from seven and a quarter to seven and three quarters, a substantial increase. The idea is to reduce the amount of money in circulation and reduce the pressure on prices and to encourage some of the billions of dollars floating around overseas to be sent back here. Here's Irving R. Levine. The Federal Reserve action taken with President Carter's blessing is intended to convince foreign holders of dollars that the U.S. government is taking steps to fight inflation so that dollars won't keep losing purchasing power. The Fed's action came two hours after the Commerce Department released figures showing that inflation has gotten worse. The nation's inflation rate has climbed from 7.2% in the first three months of this year to 10.7% in the second quarter, the highest inflation rate in more than three years. The Fed hopes to reduce inflation by raising the interest rates that its 5,700 member banks must pay on the money they borrow from the Federal Reserve. In turn, these banks will charge customers higher interest rates for loans. This is expected to slow down housing construction and other important activities in the economy. Administration officials acknowledge that along with lower inflation, the result could also be the loss of jobs and a higher unemployment rate. But administration officials say that it is necessary to deal with first things first, and that right now the first things are inflation and the sinking dollar. Irving R. Levine, NBC News at the White House. President Carter starts a two-week vacation tonight, confident that he's gotten a breakthrough on his energy bill. Some congressional leaders, however, aren't so sure. The breakthrough, if it is that, involved the toughest part of the bill, the pricing of natural gas. Here are two reports. President Carter's top advisors got the word on the energy compromise as they met for breakfast this morning. No. Overnight, the energy bill, which had been languishing in conference committee for the past eight months, was approved by the necessary 13 congressmen and nine senators. It came after President Carter himself appealed to two senators and two congressmen to go along. Mr. Carter said no deals were made, but somehow he persuaded the two congressmen who had been opposed to the natural gas pricing arrangement, Corman of California and Wrangell of New York, to go along with it. That was the key, and this morning, the president appeared in the White House press room to talk about the achievement. This is a major step forward under the most difficult of circumstances, and I and everyone in our country owe the House and Senate conferees a debt of gratitude for their persistence and tenacity and their willingness to accommodate their own deeply felt personal and sectional interest in the best interest of our country. Energy Secretary James Schlesinger said higher prices for natural gas would encourage domestic producers to produce more and lessen dependence on foreign oil. We anticipate that by 1985, the additional flow of gas will be two trillion cubic feet. The immediate effect will be to reduce our requirements by five hundred a thousand barrels of oil a day approximately the energy bill is the centerpiece of mr carter's efforts to control inflation and strengthen the american dollar abroad 
it has also stood as a sort of symbol of this administration's problems in getting things done on Capitol Hill. And now it's moving again, but it faces another major obstacle in the Senate where a filibuster is expected. Here's more on that from Jessica Savick. Senators Howard Metzenbaum and James Aberesk led the filibuster against natural gas last year. They oppose the measure because they say it is inflationary and will cost consumers money. This morning, Senator Metzenbaum said that he and Senator Aberesk would filibuster again this year. Uh, I would be prepared to call it a, a, an educational opportunity to let the people in the Senate know what's in the legislation. And if they know it, I think we have an excellent chance of not only defeating a cloture motion, but defeating the bill in its entirety. Senator Henry Jackson thinks he can beat the filibuster, narrowly pass the bill, and avoid what he calls the trauma of another year spent trying to get an energy package through Congress. I am convinced that this bill is the best that we can get if the conference report is not accepted and the vote is going to be razor thin. I can only say as chairman of the Energy Committee, we will not take up a gas bill in the new Congress. The senators may begin debate on the natural gas bill as early as next week or shortly after they return from their Labor Day recess. Jessica Savage, NBC News, the Capitol. Standard Oil of Ohio today announced plans to build a pipeline across the southwest from Long Beach, California to Midland, Texas, where it would hook into a national pipeline network. The pipeline would be used to handle Alaskan oil, which is now carried by tanker through the Panama Canal, a long and expensive process. If the oil company gets final clearance from the federal government and Long Beach voters, the whole project will cost more than $650 million.